do these glasses make me look smart? Totally. I feel like you're lying. <laughs> Everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as the Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform, or you can go directly to my website at thereligioushippie.com. So today we're going to be talking about six things that I personally do to stay motivated throughout the day. It's kind of how I balance my faith, work, and regular life schedule, and I hope it can help you guys as well if you're struggling with trying to balance everything, especially if you're a college student. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing that I do is I make my bed and I change out of my pajamas. Now I know that everybody says that you should make your bed in the morning, but there really is scientific proof behind it. When you accomplish a small task, it sets you up to accomplish tasks throughout the day. You already feel accomplished, you feel motivated, and it helps you just kickstart the day with some motivation. Now for the pajamas, usually if I'm in my pajamas, my mindset is to go to bed. So in order for my brain to feel like I need to be productive and do things, I need to change out of my pajamas. Now granted, sometimes I change into comfy clothes, but they're not PJs. It's important to differentiate between the two because if we're in the mindset for sleep, we stay in our pajamas, we're less motivated, etc. But if we change out of our pajamas, maybe put on a little bit of makeup or shower or something that gets us motivated and out of bed, then we feel more productive. The second thing I do to be productive is I pray before I touch my phone. So as soon as my alarm goes off, I turn it off, I don't touch my phone at all, I go to my prayer corner, I say my morning offering or any other morning prayers that I have set up in my schedule, and then I will go on social media. How many times have you guys kind of rolled over, gotten your phone, rolled back over, scrolled through social media, saw something that just negatively impact you, whether it was a bad comment or a post or just a poorly written email. When we see negative things like that on social media, it doesn't make us want to be productive. If anything, it makes us want to crawl back into bed and go to sleep. So to avoid that morning slump, so to speak, start your day with prayer and with God, because then that way you feel more motivated and more relaxed and at peace throughout the day, even when when hard trials come at you. Okay, the third thing I use to stay motivated is time blocking. This has been very, very helpful, especially as somebody who tries to balance college, a ministry, social life, and faith life. Now, I use a specific app on my phone, which I will link below for you guys, but I don't think you really necessarily need an app. It just helps me because I'm on my phone, and so it pops up as a reminder instead of having a sticky note that I might forget about and leave other places, or it might get stuck to my cat's butt and end up somewhere else in the house. <laughs> That's happened before <laughs> multiple times. So the day before, I will take some time at night or in the morning and I will time block out the next day. So I do this in hour and half hour segments. I wake up, I schedule in everything from showering to lunch, prayer, when I'm going to bed, when I should start getting ready for bed, etc. This really helps me stay on task and make sure that I can fully dedicate an hour or a half hour to a specific task because I personally tend to spider web and I like to multitask because I feel like a lot of times I'm not getting anything done, but turns out when I'm multitasking, I'm getting 1% of everything done, but not 100% of everything done. So if I can delegate an hour to a specific task and finish it, I can just cross it off my list. It really helps me stay organized and just on top of everything. The fourth thing I do to stay motivated is app timers. This can be really difficult due to the fact that social media literally is my job. So being on my phone and on these social media apps is kind of what I'm supposed to be doing, but I find it very helpful to still set limits with social media through app timers. And usually I need to allow myself a little extra time, especially if I'm going live or I'm doing something specific that day on a specific app. So if I'm going live on Instagram, I might need two hours instead of one hour on my app timer because I try to go live for at least 30 to 45 minutes. And if I need to do other posts or schedule things for that day, it kind of only leaves me about five or 10 minutes to kind of add those posts in. So it it kind of differs between, you know, what days I need to be on social media and what days I don't. But Sundays are usually the days I'm not on social media at all, ever. I don't post, I'm not on it, I don't scroll through it. I do my best. Sometimes I fail, but I try. <laughs> I really try, guys. But if you do plan on using app timers, I highly suggest that you don't set the password. Have your mom or a trusted friend or a sibling, maybe actually not a sibling. They might you know, you know how siblings are. But have somebody else set the timer so that you can stay consistent with it because we all have a weak moment where we're like, ah, I'm so bored, I'm just gonna scroll on social media. Our time's up, but then we're like, ah, 
I know the password. So the next thing you know, you're spending five hours on social media when you have that goal of maybe only spending an hour or two hours on social media. One thing that I will say though, is don't put social media app timers on important apps, like messages, emails, phone calls. Be like, oh, sorry, my boss called, but I had an app timer on my phone, so I couldn't answer it, you know? Todd's probably like, she's done this to me. What is she talking about? My poor producer. But don't put it on anything important that you actually need to use and that you can use in emergencies, like your phone, like your calls and messages and things like that. Just don't do that. It's a bad idea. The fifth thing I do to stay motivated is to do the biggest task first. Sometimes this is referred to as swallowing the frog. <laughs> Doing the biggest task first will make you feel more accomplished and motivated throughout the day. And then you can relax throughout the day knowing that you had the hardest task at the beginning of the day and you no longer have to worry about it. Now, I personally know that the anticipation of having to do a big task can be overwhelming. So make sure you're blocking out a certain amount of time in your day to really commit to that task. And then that way, when it's over, you're done. You feel more motivated, you feel accomplished. The biggest task is finished and you don't have to worry about it. And my sixth tip, which has to do with coffee. Mm -hmm. So my sixth tip is to use caffeine wisely. So we know that we shouldn't consume caffeine too late in the day, but we also shouldn't consume it too early in the day either. So when people first wake up in the morning, usually what they get is a cup of coffee. The issue with this is that at night we lose a liter of water and we naturally wake up dehydrated. Drinking coffee first thing in the morning will only dehydrate you more. Not just that, but it also disrupts your natural sleep cycle. And for my ladies out there, if you have coffee on an empty stomach, it can actually Actually disrupt your hormones pretty severely. And then of course, for everyone, it can lead to that midday crash that we've all experienced one time or another. So to avoid that midday crash and imbalancing your hormones, make sure that when you first wake up in the morning, you have a glass or two of water. And then after that, you have something to eat, preferably with protein like eggs or sausage or something of that nature. And then after your body somewhat has digested that food, usually a half hour later, then you can start having caffeine because then the caffeine will work with your system instead of against your system. And with all of that being said, guys, those are my six tips for staying motivated. I hope that this helped you guys. Let me know what you guys do to stay motivated in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.